Ori and the Will of the Wisps, the follow-up to the beloved Ori and the Blind Forest, continues the first game's approach of melodic, melancholic, and beautifully orchestrated music. The soundtrack, besides being lovely to listen to, makes a point to ensure that it's emotionally matching what's going on on screen in an interesting way at all times. The Moldwood Depths area of the game features a clever use of leitmotif, where the same basic theme is taken and transformed as the player descends through the level, battles the giant spider boss Mora, restores light to the area, and then makes their way back up to the surface. Each of these stages of the level, creepy exploration, a big epic battle, and the relief of victory, have different emotional requirements of the music, and composer Gareth Coker meets each of these needs while using the same Moldwood melody to tie them all together. So, without further ado, let's shed some light on Moldwood's music. First, we have the basic level theme titled Shadows of Moldwood. The level is shrouded in darkness, requiring the player to move from light source to light source to avoid getting absorbed into the darkness and killed, as they get closer and closer to the giant monster spider's lair. The game is trying to creep the player out here, but in an interview on the Composer Code podcast, Coker mentioned his approach to this level and his decision to use a melody for this section's music, rather than the maybe more obvious approach of sticking to extended string techniques and dissonant atonal noises to create the sense of dread being called for. These extended techniques and dissonant string tremolos are definitely used to create the right creepy atmosphere, but they're decorations around the core of the piece, this solo piano melody in the upper register that winds around chromatically like a creepily crawling spider. The basic theme for the Moldwood area is based off of a descending sixth. Starting on the minor third in our key of C minor, E flat, we leap down a sixth to land on a G, the fifth of the home key. An appoggiatura embellishment of our starting E flat note leads us down to the next bar of melody which starts with a D note that leaps down a sixth to an F sharp, a note which is not found in the key of C minor at all. This whole idea is taken and moved down chromatically for the following phrases. The next phrase once again starts inside the key of C minor and then shifts out with the final note landing chromatically on an E natural to create a C major chord. The final phrase takes this melodic idea and alters it slightly to land on an outline of a G major chord, the 5 chord in the key of C minor, which sets us up nicely for a resolution back to our tonic to close out the section. Later in the piece, we get a fuller sounding ensemble, with choir and more strings taking the same melody and altering it just a bit. This time, we continue a purely chromatic descent of the main descending sixth motif, outlining a C minor to D to D flat to C movement before the final C minor to G brings us back into the home key. This chromatic motion over top of a consistent C note in the bass is a really cool way to create a sense of unease without losing the listener in a barrage of chromatic motion. We always have the piece's tonic in the background to latch onto. The goal with these versions of the level theme was clearly to create a sense of creepiness and dread. Let's see how the theme changes when Coker has a different emotional goal to meet. At the bottom of the level, you come to the lair of Mora the giant spider, and when she comes and knocks you down into the boss battle pit, we get the low brass giving us one big statement of the main theme, this time in the key of G minor.
The music takes the creepy, dark energy of the level theme and bumps it up in intensity, giving us these quick arpeggios in the low strings of a G minor major 7 chord. Orgy's soundtracks typically stick to triadic harmony, but adding the major 7th on top of a minor triad here gives the music that edge, that dissonance that you want. This specific kind of chord can sound like James Bond, but played in the low strings with such ferocity moves it away from that kind of sound and into a much more intense place. Once the stage has been set by this, the main Moldwood theme comes in again, bringing back the chromatic descent over top of a tonic bass pedal that we saw in our second example. To match the intensity of the boss battle, the theme is played much quicker and staccato, with the extra bar of space in between each phrase that we heard in the level theme removed to let the piece build up momentum. The driving triplet bass line and wailing high melody get inverted in the following section, where the high strings play this repeated figure that centers around the tonic G and bounces between the chromatic notes above and below it, making this repeating A flat to G to F sharp to G figure in, once again, a driving triplet rhythm. This time the main theme appears in the bass, with the low brass and strings giving us a more drawn out version of the same melody that we just heard. Around halfway through the fight, a second phase begins, where the spider chases you up out of the boss battle pit to the area where you first encountered her, and the music shifts to a new section to appropriately capture the mood of this chase. This section makes use of time signature changes and multiple key changes to capture the right amount of frantic intensity. When the fight begins again, we find ourselves in the key of D minor, with the music giving us a repeated four chord progression. D minor to A minor to B flat to C, a 1, 5, flat 6, flat 7 loop. This kind of progression can be found all over both Ori games, and when the Moldwood theme returns to the music during the second phase of the boss fight, the chromaticism is removed and the melody is adapted to fit nicely over this four chord loop. The resulting sound is filled with determination, and the feeling has shifted from one of creeping dread to one of heroic battle. The music is clearly building up towards the player's victory as we get closer to the end of the fight. After said victory, the light is returned to the area and the player has to make their way back through the level without all of that dangerous darkness. Naturally, this part of the game isn't supposed to feel as creepy as it did coming into the level, and immediately we feel the difference as the spooky strings are replaced with a quiet harp arpeggiating a C sus4 chord. This leads into yet another variation on the same Moldwood theme, but the way Coker handles it is really interesting to me. He doesn't just transpose the piece to be in C major or entirely remove the chromatic motion of the melody. Instead, using a clever reharmonization, these elements are kept but recontextualized to sound much brighter than they originally did. After the C sus4 introduction, we start out with the same minor key sound from the original theme as this first C minor chord moves to a G chord. The melody is altered to land on a G in the fourth bar rather than an F sharp, reducing that immediate chromatic dissonance, but moving forward the melody continues that original chromatic descent, giving us a D flat to F leap and ending off with a C to E flat leap. But this time it feels so much lighter, thanks in part to the harp and more gentle string orchestration.
The original theme had this descending motif play out over a bass pedal, giving lots of opportunities for crunch between the chromatic voice leading and static C note on the bottom. With the darkness lifted, the bass moves with each chord, harmonizing this chromatic melody with bright major chords, from G major to D flat major to A flat major. The major chords continue, moving from A flat to E major, then to a D flat minor 6 chord that resolves the phrase to an A flat major chord. And it's at this point that we realize we've been tricked. The way the melody starts, it seems obvious that we're in C minor, just the same as we were on our way into the area. But by the end of the section, it becomes clear that we've been in the key of A flat major the whole time. The first two chords are a fake out, with this G major chord that would resolve nicely to C minor, jumping instead to a D flat chord. This seems to come out of left field, but with the resolution to A flat after it, we feel a small sense of release. Then the following E chord, another dissonant chord movement that seems to come out of left field, ends up being an element of mode mixture, the flat 6 chord in the key of A flat, which moves to its relative minor, the minor 4 chord, to set up a beautiful, bittersweet resolution to our tonic, which is A flat. The original theme is transposed to a major key, just not C major like you might expect from a less sophisticated composer. And the chromatic motion isn't removed, we still get harmonic leaps and melodic leaps that feel a little out there, but the leaps are carefully chosen to be the kind of chromatic motion that resolves nicely to a tonic chord instead of clashing with it. With very few changes to the actual notes of the melody, we're given a much lighter sound. This sense of transforming the original melody seamlessly matches the way the same environment has been transformed from dark and threatening to light and, well, less threatening. Taking the original theme that so perfectly captured the sound of a spider creeping through a dark forest and transforming it to match the intensity of battle, the drive towards victory, and finally the relief of a world returned to light, this is a great example of how music in games serves to enhance the emotional experience of the game. And it's also really fun to hear a theme used and reused in different contexts. It's almost like it lets you see different sides of the melody and learn more about it. Big thanks to patron Robbie Moore for the suggestion. If you'd like to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.